always felt like, and, and this is a, a major key in custom design, or just design period. When you have like something that doesn't look quite right, you know, like a seam just didn't come out right, or something doesn't look quite right, just by steaming it out, it just, it's like magic. And <laughs> so that's like a little major key right there for any designer. That steam, a good steaming goes a long way. No, I can't sleep. Baby, don't you know I can't live without your love. I try to make them feel when we're sharing a space together. I am humble, um, but I think when it comes to certain things, you just really have to push it, you know? When I first started on social media, I would just be very select. I'm still very selective about what I post, but I would just be very like, oh, you know, people don't want to see this, you know? <laughs> Then I was like, wait a minute, the things that stick in my mind are the things that I'm constantly seeing, you know? Are the songs that I hear on the radio or the songs that I'm constantly listening to. And it's just like, I know I have a good product, you know, and I really believe in it. So it's like, now I don't feel bad about pushing it on people because, you know, I really believe in it. And um, I'm so passionate and I love it so much that I feel like, if I love it this much, let me give you the opportunity to maybe love it in the same way. So. Push, push, push. I think where you say, I'm not validating myself through my market anymore. I'm paying attention to what they want and I'm tuning into them, but I'm not saying, oh, this wasn't received well, so now I don't feel good about what I'm doing. That's validation. You don't need to validate yourself through the masses, you know. I think as long as you just really like know your market, you know, of course you pay attention to what they respond well to. As of late, it's been like active wear, you know. And I think I've always had like, because I, I do, I pay attention to like global trends. And I'm always in, you know, fashion magazines and online, but I also still just like go with what I feel led to produce at the time. And I've always been like on point with the trend, thankfully. I don't know why, it's just, I don't know. I think I think it really is just because I pay attention to risk takers. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, I love this piece. I'm going to make it work. That's kind of been like the market that I've been trying to tap into. But that, I think it's harder to make money with that because it's not as safe as, you know, like the fast fashion, you know, the stuff where you, you see it on so many people, you get to the point where you're just like, oh, I've seen that before, like that'll look good on me too. Um, this is actually a print by local artist Stephen Cavanaugh. He's amazing. And he made this print for the collection that we showed last August in Omaha Fashion Week. Um, and I just really was feeling this graphic. Um, and I call this the One Love, like O-N-E, like Omaha, Nebraska, One Love t-shirt. This will be available for sale on the website as well, shopthefashionatlion.com. So um, this was a collaboration between Steven and myself, um, patent leather basketball shorts. And then um, this one is kind of the cornerstone of this small collection that I'm showing tonight. Um, I made this dress for a client of mine. This was her birthday dress. And the theme was Miami Vice. And um, I love all things Miami. <laughs> so I was really digging the theme. But then um, it just really became 
as I was making the dress, it, I don't know, I just was really feeling it. I was kind of freestyling the draping on it. It's kind of asymmetrical. And um, I decided that going forward, this is kind of going to be like the direction that I'm heading in. Like in the past, I've done silhouettes that are just very uh, form fitting. So I want to start playing around with a little bit more volume, um, a little bit more draping. I'm always going to have my signature plunging sexy neckline, but um, I just wanted to make the lines a little bit more interesting and sophisticated going forward. So we can look forward to that. And then of course I love this print and I always want to make my clothes comfortable. I don't think that you should have to sacrifice comfort for fashion and style. So I use a lot of active wear fabrics, a lot of spandex that are just really easy to wear and just feel really good on your skin when you have them on, so. And then um, this third look is another active wear piece that I made. It's basically um, the metallic um, triangle top with the metallic pants and then lots and lots of <laughs> accessory queen jewels. So it should be nice. I'm excited. about yourself, your story, and how you got started. Okay. Um, well, my story begins <laughs> in a Midwestern town, Omaha, Nebraska, where I'm originally, where I grew up. I was born in Chicago, but we moved here when I was like six months old. So my earliest memories are from here. Um, grew up in North Omaha, um, raised in the hood by a white woman. So that was interesting my jeans, you know, I started getting into labels and brands and stuff like that. So when I was about 11, my mother was a sewer growing up and um, when we were in Chicago, before I was born, she worked at Vogue Fabrics in Chicago, which is the designer fabric store. So she just had a trunk full of designer fabrics. When I was about 10, 11, I stumbled upon it and I got in there and I instantly just was in heaven. I just felt like, what are all these beautiful fabrics doing just sitting here collecting dust? So I started working with them and making things on her machine that I also found. Then I took a um, seventh grade home ec class that gave me like the basic basics of how to sew. I used it as a release whenever I was frustrated about something or that was the one thing that I could control was 
what I created with my hands. So it became kind of like a therapeutic thing. Passions and motivations. Passions and motivations. Um, as far as the passion that I put into my work, which is something that's always been there and I've just embraced it as a part of who I am. And then as far as motivations, um, infinite things. I don't want to say I grew up not having the things that I needed because I'm here. So obviously I had everything that I needed and it was in the Creator's plan for me to come up the way that I did. But sometimes just feeling like maybe I was less than or maybe I didn't um, necessarily feel I had the building blocks that I needed to be a whole person and realizing at a young age that you can uh, take a situation into your own hands and go out and get the things that you think you need <laughs> to be a whole person. So that was probably my earliest motivation. And then um, as I got older, I've always been a very spiritual person, just in tune with my, myself to a certain extent and with my environment. And just knowing that um, there's a lot going on in the world and every person has the opportunity to have a voice. And there's so many things going on in the world. There's so many different things to look at and experience. But when you give them a visual that's appealing, um, fashion, a beautiful model, something that's just hard hitting and in your face, people are more likely to be able to digest whatever it is that your message is. Who do you want people to see through your work? I mean, I present myself as a very eclectic, broad slate. Um, I've lived in the Midwest, I've lived in New York, I've lived in the Deep South, you know, I've lived um, <laughs> in a small town of Minnesota with 28,000 people, you know what I mean? So, um, I've um, had a chance to really travel around um, thus far in my life and get to know different people and different cultures. I think that's probably the best part of me. And through that, I'm able to give it back to whoever needs it, you know? Um, I, I'm an artist. Um, I was an athlete at one point. Um, I exposed myself to a lot of different things to broaden myself. Oh, I have days where I feel very vulnerable and guarded, and I have days where I feel like, you know, I'm queen of the world, you know, and I can do anything. I've had some horrible blunders in my life, and I've had some grandiose successes, and every day is a journey, but um, I think from where I am right now, um, in my life, I have a lot to, to offer people, and um, that's why I really appreciate opportunities like this, where um, people like you want to you know, listen to me and listen to my voice because I have always felt like this is what I'm here for.